Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be going over problem two from week seven of the Invariance Summer Puzzle Competition. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Facebook page of the Invariance where you can find more details of the competition. This is a problem I'm going to be tackling today and it's a graph theory problem. And the way I've written it down here on the whiteboard is slightly different to how it was originally phrased. So to, so to see an original statement of the problem, check out the description uh, below. Anyway, this is what we have. We have G, a simple planar graph, which means that it's a graph, but none of the edges cross. And we want to prove that it's possible to add a direction to each edge in such a way that the out degree of each vertex is at most three. So the out degree simply means a number of uh, kind of edges you can leave from. So I've kind of written up an example here. We start off with a simple graph and you can see I've added arrows to each edge uh, and that corresponds to the direction. So this edge is kind of going from this vertex to this vertex. Now one thing we should note is because originally we have a simple graph, that means that each kind of edge is a one-way edge. I can't now have this guy here. I can't have that as, you know, that wouldn't be a valid kind of edge. We wouldn't be able to have that edge because originally our graph is a simple graph and then we're adding on our directions. And anyway, we want to show that it's possible to add on the directions in such a way that the out degree of each vertex is at most three. So the out degree of this guy here, this vertex, for example, is just one because there's only one kind of edge that you're allowed to leave from this vertex from. You know, this one here comes into it, but you can't leave uh, going that direction. For example, the out degree of this vertex here is one, two, three, because there are three arrows essentially pointing away from it. The out degree of this vertex here is uh, just one, actually. So it's just one coming out from here. So you can go ahead and check that this is a valid kind of graph. So if we were originally given this graph here, you know, something like that. So if this was our original graph, um, I'm probably going to forget an edge. If it was something like this, I think I've got all the edges. Then we could add on the directions like this and we get a valid solution to this problem. And I guess one thing to note is the in degree of this vertex here, so the number of edges coming into it is four, but that's fine. We don't care about the in degree for this problem. It's simply the out degree we care about. Okay, and of course, this is just a special case. We want to prove that it holds in general. So given any graph, uh, which is planar, uh, and then, we, yeah, a simple, given any simple planar graph, we want to show that it's possible to add directions to each of the edges in such a way that the out degree of each vertex is at most three. I hope that makes sense. If you want to have a go at the problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into the solution. <laughs> Okay, so as with a lot of graph theory problems, the solution to this is going to be done by induction. And in this case, it's going to be induction on the number of edges in our graph. So the base case is pretty straightforward. If our graph just has one edge, then we can just add a direction to that edge, and certainly the out degree of each vertex will be at most three. The next thing we're going to do is assume that this property kind of holds for any graph with m edges. So in other words, if you give me any simple planar graph with m edges, then I can show that or I can kind of add directions to each of the uh, edges in such a way that the out degree of each vertex is at most three. And what we want to do is prove that then it must also be possible for a graph with m plus one edges, and then we'll be done by induction. So now let's suppose that, you know, I've either, you know, drawn up an example up here. Let's suppose that this is a simple planar graph, well, it is certainly a simple planar graph, but in particular that it has m plus one edges. And I'm going to show how you can then take this graph and add directions to it in such a way that each vertex, uh, sorry, the degree of each, uh, the out degree of each vertex is at most three. So this has m plus one edges. And what we want to do is, well, firstly, it is simple planar because none of the edges overlap. Oopsie daisy. Okay, um, and what we want to do is just take any two vertices which share an edge. So any two vertices which are neighbours. And in this case, I'm going to choose this one here, label it A, and this one here and label it B. And there is certainly an edge between A and B. The next thing I want to do is just temporarily, temporarily, sorry, get rid of the edge between A and B. So get rid of that. And now what we have is a, a simple planar graph on M edges. So by our assumption, we can add directions to each of the uh, edges in such a way that the out degree of each vertex is at most three. So what we do is just go ahead and add on those directions. And suppose we've done that now, we've added on the directions to this graph and the out degree of each vertex is at most three. Well, notice that if the out degree of A was less than or equal to two, so suppose we had this edge here going out, this one here going out, but this one here going into A, so then in this case, the out degree of A is two, well, then I can just go ahead, go ahead, sorry, and add the edge uh, AB back in, and then just add on this direction from A to B, 
then I've just made the out degree of A less than or equal to 3, because before it was less than or equal to 2, I've added an out edge, so that's going to make the out degree of A less than or equal to 3, so that's fine. And I haven't changed the out degree of any of the other edges, uh, any of the other vertices, sorry, so they'll certainly still be at most 3, and I'll have solved my problem. So that's pretty uh, straightforward. So what we're going to do is now is assume that the out degree of A is 3. Because if it wasn't 3, well then we could uh, do what I just said. So the next thing we're going to do is we have our out degree of A being equal to 3. And then what we're going to do is suppose that we can also find a vertex V for which there exists a path from A to B. Because remember, this, this all has uh, directions on it. I haven't uh, drawn them out, but they, this graph has directions on them. And suppose we're, we're going to suppose that there exists a vertex V such that the graph from A to B, uh, A to V, sorry, is, you know, there's a directed path from A to V, and also uh, V has out degree at most 2. So I'm just going to kind of illustrate what I mean by this. Suppose this is our vertex V, and there's a directed path from A to V, so suppose we go to this vertex, and then up to V here, but then the out degree of V, we're supposing, is at most 2. So suppose we have something like that. So v, the out degree of V is just 2 in this case, which I've drawn on. Then what we can do is just look at the, the path from A to V like so. So we have A to this vertex, this vertex to V. And then just alternate all the directions on that path. So in this case, I'm going to change this guy here to this guy here, this guy here to this guy here. And now, notice that the out degree of V before was at most 2, and now I've, now I've added kind of an out degree. It had one in degree and now it's turned into an out degree, and that then has made, you know, uh, added one to the out degree of this vertex, but before it was at most two, so now the out degree of V is at most three, and that's fine. And notice that all the kind of intermediate vertices, in this case there's only one, this guy here, its out degree hasn't changed. Before, it was in one in and one out, and now it's still one in and one out. It's just that different edges are, ha are contributing towards the in degree, and the different edges contributing to the out degree. But that's fine. Anyway, now we have that this vertex has an uh, out degree at most, sorry, this, uh, the, the out degree of this vertex hasn't changed, but notice that our A, before it had out degree 3, but now we, this vertex which was going out of it now is an in edge, so now this guy has out degree 2, and then we can go ahead, add in this guy, uh, edge here, from A to B, and then we're done. Because now this A has out degree at most 3, all the intermediate vertices in our path uh, their out degree didn't change. V, the out degree, add, you know, we added one to the out degree, but that was fine because its out degree before was at most two, and we haven't touched any of the other vertices, so their out degree will still be at most three, and that uh, solves our problem. But that was assuming that such a V exists. So we assume that such a V exists. So what was that? What properties did V have? It had out degree at most three, and also it was kind of reachable from A. There was a directed path from A to V. Now notice that the exact same argument holds for B. So everything I've said so far for A also holds for B. So if B initially, I mean this is probably not the best example because it only has degree 2 anyway, so certainly it's going to have out degree at most 2. So if I did get rid of this edge, like we had here, drew on our directions and you know, it only has out degree 1, one here at most. So I could have just done that and that would have solved our problem. But everything I've said so far for A also holds for B. So if A, sorry, if B, you know, when we get rid of this edge here, if B has out degree, uh, you know, less than or equal to 2, then we can just add in this edge here and we'll be done. And also if B does have out degree 3, and there exists some vertex, say U now, which, uh, you know, you can reach B, you know, there's a directed path from B to U, and U has out degree at most 3, then we can look at that path, uh, reverse all the directions, and that will solve our problem as well. So now what we're going to do is suppose that such a V and such a U does not exist. And actually what we're going to do is prove that that uh, situation is impossible. And the way we're going to do that is by using the fact that G is a planar graph. And so far we haven't used that G is a planar graph. Anyway, let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so I've written a lemma up on the whiteboard, and that says that for any planar graph, the number of edges in that graph is less than or equal to 3 times the number of vertices in that graph, minus 6. Now, I'm not going to prove this lemma. This is actually quite a standard result. So if you've not seen it before, just go ahead and look that up. Uh, anyway, let's continue. Essentially, what I claim is that a U and V must always exist. So the U and V I just described in relation to A and B must always exist. And the way I'm going to prove that that's true is by contradiction. So we're going to suppose that both U and V do not exist and show that it arrives at a contradiction to this lemma here. 
Okay, so essentially what we're doing is we're assuming that for any vertex from A, that so any vertex is reachable from A, in other words, we'll call that vertex V, if we can get a directed path from A to V, then the out degree of V must be 3, and similarly for B, so the out degree of any vertex which you can get to from B must be 3. Okay, so if there's a vertex U, you can, there's a directed path from B to U, then the out degree of U must be 3. But then what we want to do is consider the subgraph of our graph G. So we have G with A and B in it and all of our other vertices. We want to consider the subgraph which has A and B in it and all the other vertices which are reachable from A and B. So in other words, every single vertex that you can get to from A, either A or B, or potentially both. But then, by our assumption, each vertex must have out degree 3. Okay, for this to make sense, because of what we just said, because if not, then we can go back to the last whiteboard and then, you know, reverse that path and then draw the edge from A to B. So each vertex on that graph has degree 3. So let's suppose that the number of edges in our graph is E. So our subgraph, sorry, is E. But then the out degree of each vertex is 3. And then if we essentially count the number of edges in that graph, each edge is going to have a corresponding kind of start vertex. So that tells us that the number of edges is simply going to be... 3 times the number of vertices. So if our number of vertices in our subgraph is n, then we have that e is equal to 3n. Because um, each, vertex, sorry, each vertex has out degree 3, and each edge has kind of corresponding vertex that it comes out of, and hence the number of edges must be 3 times the number of vertices, so e is equal to 3n. But notice that our original graph g was planar and simple, so certainly any subgraph of g will be simpler, simple and planar, but then our subgraph has E equals 3N, but notice then that 3N is certainly not less than or equal to 3N minus 6. And then we arrive at a contradiction to our lemma. So we kind of finish our contradiction proof, and hence a U or V must exist. So in any simple planar graph, uh, you know, sorry, in the, in the simple planar graph we have with A and B, there must be a vertex which is either reachable from A or reachable from B, or potentially both, and has out degree at most Three, uh, sorry, at most two, because otherwise we're going to arrive at a contradiction to this lemma. I hope that has all made sense, and I hope my explanation was clear. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.